Today we're going to be reviewing the Wayne Lux W8 laser engraver and I've also got the, uh, the smoke and air purifier add-on for it as well. So I'm going to say straight away that I really did not have a good experience with this machine and I want to give you my thoughts. Before we do that, I want to quickly thank the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. If you need any type of fabrication from PCB etching to CNC machining, PCBWay can help you bring your design into reality. Or maybe you just need advice on how to bring a product to market, PCBWay can even help you with that with their turnkey OEM services, ranging from proof of concept prototyping to full design assembly and distribution. Whatever it is you need, PCBWay have you covered. A lot of the reviews that I've seen online for this machine have been very positive, so I'm a little bit surprised that I've had such a bad experience with this. The packaging and unboxing was fine. It comes very nicely packaged um, in some nice stiff uh, foam inserts to keep it all in place during a transport. This is where I come across the first issue, and it is just literally getting the thing set up and connected to a computer. I've never had so much issue getting something connected to a computer and getting it working. I've tested and used about maybe five or six laser engravers uh, and also about three or four uh, 3D printers and also a CNC machine. So I've got pretty good experience of connecting these type of machines to a computer and getting it working with some sort of software. So first of all, the issue is, and this is gonna come up quite a lot in this review, is the, the translation to English. The instruction manual and also the software that you use with this machine, CutLab X, is pretty terrible in terms of the translation and therefore just the overall user experience. So the confusion that I had with this is that there is a micro SD slot in this laser engraver. I did watch other reviewers and they said that they installed drivers onto the memory card and then you plug it back into the machine. If you look at the instruction manual that comes with it, one of the first things that I really didn't like to see is that you go to a website and it's called dkjxz.com and you have to download a exe file from there which just really doesn't sound too safe to do straight away. Then it goes into the fact that you you install this the drivers onto the memory card. But also I spoke to support and I think it was also the case that there was there was the software and the drivers already on the memory card and you just simply plug that into your computer to then instead of downloading it from this weird website it's already on the memory card. I had no files or drivers on the memory card so I had to download it from this website I then installed it onto my laptop and nothing worked. And then I also installed it onto the memory card and plugged it back into the machine and nothing worked. I was told that I don't need to worry about installing things onto the memory card. Basically, it took me a good few days to get this thing set up. I can't actually remember how I got this connected um, because it was like two months ago because I've had so many issues trying to review this machine. It's been such a long time, but I'm pretty sure that I ended up just wiping everything from the memory card, uninstalling the drivers and just basically doing a fresh install of the drivers onto my laptop and then connecting the laser engraver. The next issue that I had was just getting this machine to home. It took me a good day to figure out what I was doing wrong and it was only because I sent a video to support and they told me, just close the door. When you've got this door open, you cannot use the laser engraver. It's a safety feature and it's actually quite a good idea. There is no sort of feedback on the machine, nor is there any sort of feedback in the software to tell you that the door's open. You need to close it in order to do the homing process. Just little things like that were just very, very annoying. Also, the reason why I had this door open when I was doing the homing is because my machine was not aligned correctly and it was crashing into the uh, the end of the, of the rails constantly. And basically, as it got to the end of the homing, I just had to nudge it so it just hit those limit switches. Um, so what I had to do is I had to take off this top lid. I had to find some, there's a few little bolts just to align the, it is the, the wire rail properly. So quality control could definitely be improved. Now, I really did like the look of this machine when I was reading the specs of it. First of all, you know, the fact that it is an enclosed machine. Just from safety, I think having an open frame machine is just not very safe. I've only got one enclosure for the open frame machines that I've that I've got, uh, and I've built it to fit just a typical 400 by 400 laser engraver. And if you get one that's a different size, it's not gonna fit in your enclosure, and you've got to build one all over again. So that's why I kind of want to stick with enclosed machines going forward. But also I like the fact that you can do the, the focusing from the outside, and they've actually got this nice big knob here that you can uh, move this, this bed up and down. And I think this is probably the easiest focusing that I have experienced from testing these type of machines. You don't have to touch the actual uh, laser module itself. All of the focusing is just done from here and you're just moving the bed up and down. You can just, if I just move this here, you can just drop this 
uh, focusing lever down and then you can move this up and down so you've got it focused properly. I like that because what I've always found is that when you are focusing just the module itself, um, you're moving that up and down and then clamping it in and you do get a little bit of movement. Even the ones that have a nice dovetail feature on them, I do find there is still a little bit of slack. This is definitely the best way to focus, I think. Moving just the bed up and down and leaving the module in place is, is probably a better way of doing it. Now, one of the main reasons why I uh, decided to review this machine is that I thought it looked like a very good, cheap alternative to something like the X2F1 that I did recently review, and I, I really did like that machine. The reason is, is that it has a built-in camera at the top here. It allows you to use that for positioning your pieces and then you can engrave on them. It's kind of similar to what the F1 does, but it obviously uses the laser to actually draw the outline of the shape or text that you're gonna be engraving. But it kind of works the same way in that you can just place something on the, uh, the bed here and then within the software, you can do the positioning. And with other machines, with open frame machines, I always disliked the way that you would have to uh, keep on having to draw a frame and try and get the positioning just right. On small objects, it is a real pain in the ass. So when I saw this machine had that feature, I was very, very uh, excited to try it out. So let's go over the issues that I had with, with this feature. First of all, it's that it can only be used with Wi-Fi. If you just connect this through uh, USB, you cannot use that webcam feature, which is really annoying. Secondly, the translation uh, and the steps involved within Cutlab X are not very well translated and it's a little bit difficult to understand what to do. So within Cutlab X it will engrave this uh, pattern and then you will set your uh, registration points within the software and it should supposedly calibrate the camera to uh, the bed accurately. I found that it was always off by about seven or eight millimeters. It didn't work, the calibration, and I went through those steps multiple times. Every single time, it's always out. So then uh, the support told me to basically draw in an extra line of where it was off. I had to measure it, and then I had to draw that line within Cutlab X and the software. And this is kind of where I finally just gave up with trying to review and get this machine to work. So within Cutlab X, the tools to draw things is not very good, it's a bit of a basic software. But to my amazement, they do not have an undo or a redo feature. And it was at that point that I just kind of stopped uh, even bothering continuing to review this machine. I found that just such basic features like an undo button in the software, you know, this thing just clearly isn't ready for release yet. I did ask them, is there an undo feature? I was looking through the interface on Cutlab X for many, many minutes, trying to find it, going into all the menus. I finally gave up, sent them a message, and they said, yeah, this is not a feature that is in Cutlab X. Uh, we will be adding it in the future. So, you know, they've given me these instructions to work around the registration that doesn't work. I'm trying to draw this line in. You draw it in incorrectly. It's very difficult to then select that line and then move it. Um, so I wanted to undo it. There is no undo feature. So yeah. Hopefully you can understand my kind of frustration with this. When I'm comparing it to the experience that I had with the F1, yes, it is you know, double, maybe three times the price, but you know this just doesn't compare at all in that regard, I think. So lastly, I just wanted to talk about the air purifier as well. That was a bit of a letdown. As you can see, it is quite a, a small purifier and I've got my air purifier and I was just doing some tests with it, uh, just doing some basic engraving. Uh, you just plug this into the side here and it's uh, within the WA, it's got a small fan, and then this also has a fan to suck the smoke out, and then it just exhausts it out of here. I put the air quality monitor next to this, and yeah, the results were very, very high, and I could tell that it wasn't doing a good job because uh, it just stunk of smoke in here, to be honest with you. It didn't do a very good job. When I'm comparing it to something like the uh, the X-Tool air purifier that I tested with the F1, you know, it really does reduce the smells in, in the room. You can tell straight away that it is clean in the air. And when I put my, uh, my air quality monitor to the exhaust of that air purifier, you know, you could see that the, the numbers were drastically reduced. So again, it's, you know, I, I really do like what they're trying to do with this. I like the small... Uh, form factor of it. I like the small form factor of the air purifier. It's something that you can easily store away. Um, it doesn't take up a lot of space when you just want to do some small engraving jobs. But just time and time again, when I'm reviewing this machine, it's just not performing to its intended specs. And also with this air purifier, you know, with the like the X-Tool one, for instance, you have an exhaust on that air purifier so that then you can clean it and then you can actually filter it out the window 
as an additional step. Um, here you don't have any way to do that to exhaust these fumes, which is a little bit annoying. You can see that this is the only exhaust port for it. It would be nice if the exhaust was just like, you know, the input port here, which is just a twist lock mechanism. So then I could just attach another hose to it. Again, just not something that's been really thought through, I feel. So I wasn't able to use the main feature of this, which to me is using the, uh, the webcam feature to engrave shapes but I was able to do basic engraving uh, with this machine and I found it to be okay. It's a 10 watt laser and it's comparable to the other 10 watt machines that I've tested. Uh, as I said, I did like the way that you focus. It was quick and easy to focus um, and that's really about it. There's not really too much to say about the actual laser engraver itself. It's a 10 watt laser module and it's pretty much the same as any other 10 watt laser module that I've tested. What sets this machine apart is you know, these features that I haven't been able to test and just do not work. And also the fact that those features you are locked into using CutlebX if you do want to use the webcam feature and CutlebX is Probably one of the worst bits of software that I've ever had to use. So unfortunately, I cannot recommend this machine. I do feel that a lot of these things are probably easy to fix. I think like the crashing that I had with the home in, you know, that can just be fixed with better quality control in place. The software, again, you know, that can be easily updated and I'm guessing it will be. Uh, in the future, more updates, more features will be added to it. It's a little bit of shame about this, the exhaust, there's not really much you can do about that. Hopefully they will redesign that outlet port there. The calibration issues that I had with the camera, yeah, it's not anything really wrong with the camera itself. The, the quality of the camera isn't amazing, but it's good enough to actually see what is on the bed and the things that you're placing on it. It's really just that misalignment, which again, can easily be fixed. And the, you know, the CutLab X experience of going through the calibration, you know, I've told them, you know, just honestly, just hire a translator to translate all of the software and all of the steps involved. And it would probably have cleared up a lot of the confusion and the annoyance that I had while testing this machine. So I was really hoping that this was uh, gonna be the, the budget F1, basically. That's why I was so excited about testing this. Yeah, hopefully they'll make some changes to it and hopefully we'll be testing a version two of this soon. I feel that we're probably gonna be seeing more and more of this form factor of laser engraver, something that's enclosed, something that does actually think about safety features and is a really nice thing to see uh, these companies that are producing these type of laser engraving machines. But anyway, I hope you found this review useful. If you've got a W8, please let me know your experience with using this. It'd be very interesting to see uh, how, how different it is because from what I've seen of reviews on YouTube, other people that are using this, they've had a lot of success with it. So maybe go and take a look at those to get a little bit more of a balanced view. As I said, not something I can recommend at this stage. Any questions, feel free to ask. Remember to like and subscribe and I will catch you later.